Hello everyone. Our beds are two weeks old today. Our demonstration beds are two weeks old today. Remember, we brought in 10 broilers to demonstrate the process of rearing broilers. We have them here. Just this morning, we had to change their location from where they were, that you know, to a new place. That place was becoming too small, too hot for them. So we are making use of a spare room for this. It's just a spare room. Making use of a spare room for this currently. Uh, it's not a very fancy arrangement. We made use of a plank to demarcate this room and then some cartons to help us um, demarcate the space where they will stay. Our, our wood shavings are on the floor and the beds are doing very well. You also see we were using this feeder before, this feeder, but uh, a day or two to them getting to two weeks, they began to overturn this feeder. So we quickly had to switch to bigger feeders. We did not, we have hung the feeders, but it's not very high. So they, it can be at their level as they keep growing, we'll keep taking the feeder higher and higher wood shavings on the floor, and then the water elevator from the floor, so that we reduce the amount of wood shavings that gets into the water. So this is the new home for our broilers. They will stay here until they mature. Now, as bears get to two weeks, as they cross two weeks, the propensity for sickness, disease, and mortality increases. Once your bears are over two weeks, know that you are already at the verge of having crisis if your bears are not managed well. In this video, I'll be showing you how to prevent mortalities for bears that have passed brooding. We have stopped giving heat, no more heat again. Brooding is over. The next thing now is to manage them until maturity. So we have to check what do we do to prevent mortalities. Now, one of the major issues you will notice for bears at this stage going forward is leg problems, leg problems. They begin to have difficulties moving and they begin to have issues of coccidiosis. They begin to have issues of sudden death. They begin to have issues of disease outbreak that you did not experience for the first two weeks. I'll be showing you how to manage all of these situations using medication and effective management practices. But first of all, let us evaluate what we have done so far. Did our bears meet up to the weight they are supposed to get to? At two weeks of age, your broilers, each of them is supposed to have consumed 500 grams of feed. That is, each, um, every two beds will consume one kg. One bed will consume half kg, that is 500 grams. Two beds, one kg. So we have 10 beds here, we're supposed to have given them a minimum of um, 5 kg of feed so far. In that 5 kg, the expected weight we should be having should be 460 grams upwards. If your beds are 460 grams, 460 grams, you've done a good job. If you have less than 450 grams at two weeks, your, your brooding has not been very, very effective. You need to step up your game to meet up. So we'll do a quick weighing sampling to see if we have met up with the expected weight at this time. So we'll pick these beds one after the other and place them on our weighing scale to see their weight. Then we'll take average to know how well we are fed. Let's pick one. This is our first bed here. 747 grams. 723 grams. 713 grams. 684 grams. 708 grams, 672 grams. All right, we've done the weighing for our beds and the average weight is 707. Wow, that was a big one. Let's clap for ourselves. 707. If you have 460, you have met the minimum average weight. That is the average weight. We have far exceeded that. We made use of um, Breedwell Professional Starter Feed up till this point. We fed them ad libitum. That is, there has been feed from morning till night. Feed has never finished from their feeders since they were brought. And there's always water constantly. Water has never finished. So we achieved over 700 grams at two weeks. By week three, we will exceed 1.2 kg by far, hopefully, by God's grace. Now, let's talk about our beautiful bears. Very beautiful looking, but they are at a very delicate time. The maternal immunity that they came with has expired, mostly for every disease prevention, it has expired. So it is our ability to keep them now that keeps them safe. We will need knowledge, management practices, and medications to keep the bears safe going forward. Now let me explain how diseases enter in to cause mortality for our bears. The first and most primary source of disease for your bears at this stage is their water. 
listen carefully their water is the first source of disease foul typhoid e coli they are all from water so you must ensure that whatever water you are giving to them is good i always say if you cannot drink it don't give it to your bed now one source of um management for water is to ensure you put in water disinfectant um, chemicals there are several of them we have um isochlor we have dutrion and there are a number of them that are very popular visit your local pharmacy shop and ask them that you want water treatment chemical for poultry when they are not taking medication when they are not taking drugs when they are not taking vaccine please ensure that their water always contains water treatment chemicals it will eliminate a major source of disease introduction to them now the second source of disease introduction to your bed is wood shavings or sawdust your litter material where you pick your litter material from is very very important if you just go randomly and pack from anywhere you're on your own you will introduce disease to your bed watch the previous video that we've made on how to source quality litter material follow the steps and get quality materials for the litter of your beds your litter is the most prevalent material here where your beds rest in so it must be carefully um, sourced and make sure that it doesn't contain bacteria or disease causing organisms another source of disease introduction now is vectors by vectors i mean those external things that can bring in disease Number one, rats, cockroaches, lizards, mosquitoes, and um, any other external birds that are flying. These are sources of disease introduction. You should make sure that as you are keeping these birds here, you plug every hole where rats will come in. Rats will move from shock away, lizards, cockroach, from gutters, they'll move into your beds, bringing in disease. Please eliminate all of that source. I can guarantee you that if your water is treated, your litter is nice, your vectors, all these ones I mentioned, do not have access to your beds, you can record a near zero mortality rate. No matter how big your flock is, a near zero mortality rate. For small flocks like this 10 here, you should be having zero mortalities if you do all of this I just mentioned. Let me list a few more to help you. Your feed can introduce disease to your bed. Where you go to meal your feed or where you go to buy your feed. It, please be very careful with this. If you are going to meal your feed, make sure that you go to a place that ensures strict biosecurity. If you go to buy your feed, remember other farmers like you are also coming to buy. Some of them are coming from farms that are infected with different types of diseases. They are coming to rub body with the feed and then they rub body, they pick one, they leave five of the feed and they rub their hands and body on. You pick them to your farm, it becomes an issue. So ensure that wherever you are buying your feed, farmers do not have access to go carry feed. Feed is brought out for farmers after they have paid. Finally, we humans, we the farmers, as well as potential visitors and buyers, they are the ones who bring in disease too. Look, that market woman that wants to come and check your beds, oh, your, madam, your beds are good. He comes to your pen, he rubs hand on them, he leaves. You who is entering your pen, you also hold hand where that, that um, buyer has, has held the hand and you move inside and touch your bed. You may be the one who is using your hand to carry disease into your pen. So please ensure you have strict biosecurity protocols. Your hands, your legs, put on your footwear. The footwear you wore to go outside should not be the one you carry into the farm. Once you get to the farm, change your footwear, change your clothing, and ensure that you wash your hand properly before you go and touch your bed. Ensure these strict biosecurity procedures to, uh, to eliminate the instance of um, diseases entering your farm. Now, I will quickly talk about a few things you can do now to ensure you have healthy beds up to maturity. There are management plans, management strategies to employ. The first one, and very important one, ensure your beds have a minimum of four hours of sleep from now onwards. You can induce your beds to sleep at any time by putting up the light and making the place dark. It's best for you to do it at night. Minimum of four hours of sleep every day will help the internal biological and physiological processes of the beds to perform at optimal level. Give them four hours of sleep every day minimum. That is darkness period. Number two, when your beds get to day 17, that is two and a half weeks, we will need to ensure that we limit their feed intake. If you are giving them professional feed, if you are giving professional feed and you are rearing your beds properly, uh, you will notice around week three that many of them start having splayed legs. The legs are um, parted into two. They can no longer stand upright. Their legs are one is going to the left, one is going to the right. Many people think it's a problem of calcium. No, it's actually a problem of the, the muscles not being strong enough, matured enough to carry the weight of these beds. So to avoid this problem at two and a half weeks, give your beds food till 8 p.m. Then keep them with water and vitamins from 8 p.m. till 6 a.m. So they stay for this two and a half weeks till three and a half weeks, just taking water alone at night. Their growth is slowed down so that their muscles can be strengthened. 
Now, this is for people who are slaughtering their birds or calling them at the age of eight weeks and above. If you are, if you are um, harvesting your birds at four weeks, five weeks, you don't need to do all of this. By the time that problem of splayed leg is about to come, you are selling your birds already. But if you are keeping beds up to eight weeks above, by the time you get to two and a half weeks, for one week, two and a half weeks to three and a half weeks, make sure feed is removed in the night. Keep them on water and multivitamins alone. The third thing is careful monitoring of your beds every day. See, if you have been giving your beds good attention before, now you need to increase it more. Every day monitor your beds. There are three things you should bear in mind when, when inspecting your beds. We we'll call it SIT, sanitation, isolation, traffic control sanitation ensure you change your litter very very often don't joke with that once you start see the cost of litter is cheaper than the cost of drugs and medication so ensure you change your litter otherwise you'll spend more money on drugs when your litter is getting a bit damp change it and put fresh one proper litter management proper sanitation wash your drinkers wash the feeders ensure that there are no flies in that place and the place is generally clean that is sanitation now isolation um, you should have a separate place to keep beds for monitoring. If you come in and you find one bed is looking duller than the others, it's not very active towards food. It's not showing appetite. Quickly isolate it. Don't allow sickness to manifest fully before you isolate. Isolate any beds that are looking like they're not so good, they're not very active. Isolate them to your monitoring room. Monitor them, ensure that they are okay before you introduce them back. If you keep them there for three, four days, whatever disease is trying to show up will manifest then you can treat. By effective isolation, you will limit the cause of disease in your farm, disease outbreaks in your farm. Now, traffic control. People who come to your farm should be limited at this time, both for humans and for unwanted animals. Limit traffic into your farm. Let it be the only person who treats your beds or who cares for your beds should be the only one who has access to them. With careful monitoring, with careful care, with careful observation, you will eradicate the issues of disease introduction to your farm. Now, number five, this is the time to give anticoxidosis. If you've not given it up to this point, please begin to work on it. Give them your anticoxidosis at this time. They are very susceptible to it from week two upwards. So ensure you administer coccidial prevention treatment or treatment uh, by anticoxidosis and give them. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, finally, before I go, remember stress due to heat. Stress due to heat. Our beds have been receiving heat all this way. Now our beds need to stay cool. Heat stress can spoil all your effort. Ensure you have a well-ventilated place that is cool and free from heat from um, this point onwards. And generally, your bed should not be too cold or too hot at any point in time. Watch their body language and ensure that they are cool and they are refreshed. At this point, they are beginning to develop feathers to keep themselves warm. So please ensure that they are not too hot at this point forward. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.